Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson with Watauga County Arts Council, and as you know, one of the things the Arts Council does is promote the arts all through our community, and that includes things that are happening uh, with the university as well. I have with me Joel Williams, and Joel is a professor in the theater department at Appalachian State University, and he was just now sort of cluing me in on the ins and the outs of the story of Tartuffe because we're going to get a chance to see this production coming up very shortly. That's correct. Coming up November the 5th. We open November the 5th. And it's running how many times? Ten performances. Wow. We're doing our studio theater and uh, we, in order to accommodate the students, mm -hmm. uh, audiences and community audiences that we have that we're um, running it a little longer because we don't have the capacity that we have in, our, mm -hmm. in the Ballborg Theater. Mm -hmm. So they have 10 opportunities. That's correct. And don't procrastinate because it's not that big of a theater. So if you wait till the very last minute, you may not get in. <laughs> so, now this is, isn't this the, door, the theater they call the Red Door Theater? Well, it has a red door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, that's sort of the unofficial name yes. of the theater. And that's true. <laughs> it's uh, in I.G. Greer, which, and it's, in the, uh, it's an old converted band room, actually. Really? It's a very intimate space. Mm -hmm. The audience sits uh, in a horseshoe around the stage, so they're right. very close to the performers. Um, it's located, if anybody's ever been on campus, uh, the student films, the, the series that they do, mm -hmm. is shown in I.G. Greer in right. an auditorium. We're mm -hmm. underneath that. We're in the... It's ground level because, of course, nothing on the campus is, but it kind of feels like the basement. Mm -hmm. But And you're doing this in the evenings and on weekends, so that's parking is correct. accessible because well, we hope of so. that. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. If worse came to worse, you'd go to the... Uh, River the, Street parking yeah, deck. Yeah, parking deck. Cross the, the cross the Skyway, mm -hmm. pass the, just as you pass, you come right across to the Central Dining Hall. And then just take a right to IG Greer. It's not. It's not a difficult walk to. But walk there's also walk. street parking. There's street parking yeah. along University Drive and Academy Street, which is a one way that we weaves its way around mm -hmm. by the uh, administration building by IG Greer. So there's usually on the weekends. There's usually. Um, parking right along there and the evening performances start at what time seven seven thirty seven thirty right so that does give plenty of time between the university day-to-day sort of, day stuff right you sort know. of shutting uh, down mm -hmm. most of the faculty yeah. who've parked in that area are moving away right and sort of they've gone to get thing. dinner and that's right <laughs> that's right so then you can scoot in and right. get your parking but space but that university right when you come in you go around by the tennis courts there are a lot of parking spaces mm -hmm. along there so. Now, Tartuffe is a, you said, a play that was written by Moliere, That's which was correct. a long time ago. About 345 years ago. Yeah. And so, are we going to get to see a whole lot of these and thous and no, uh, to understand English? No, language? It's a, it was actually, uh, the, the version that we're doing, it, it, of course, originally written in French, has been translated to English by Richard Wilbur, who is mm -hmm. a, a award-winning poet. Okay. And uh, Moliere tended to write in verse, and mm -hmm. Richard Wilbur has done a great job of taking uh, the original French and turning it into an English uh, version, translation, and has done a great job of keeping what we call rhymed couplets. The Alexandrian yeah. rhymed uh -huh. couplets are uh -huh. very strong masculine rhymes, and one of the challenges for the students is not to fall into that Jack and Jill cadence when they're doing the lines. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we didn't change the script at all. I did. Mm -hmm. I, when you get the script, it's written like a poem. And I did, in order to help the students not just see that and fall into that, I retyped it uh, wow. just mm -hmm. to take it out of the poetic mm -hmm. and, you know, fixed it so that when they were looking at the script, they weren't seeing, oh, my God, this is a poem and it rhymes. Uh, but you can, we, we've worked very hard. They've worked very hard to uh, sort of overcome that, you know, yeah. fall into a rhythm. And uh, you can still hear it uh, if they get their lines right. You can still hear the, the scanning and the, and, the, and, the, and the rhyming. But then you set this in a whole different era. Completely. That's correct, because mm -hmm. uh, partly because we're doing this in our studio theater because we had just a really successful big production uh, uh -huh. with costumes and lots of scenery and projections of uh, homes, the art of deduction. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have two dance concerts uh, that are coming up very quickly. So the Ballborg Theater is kind of booked out, so we're doing it in our studio theater. And as a result, uh, we're also saving a little money. You know, we do a big show and then a smaller show. And so we didn't want to do period costumes. Uh -huh. uh, it would have been very expensive to do that and uh, the time involved in, in making those period costumes. So the costumes are primarily pulled 
and or, or there's a couple things being built or purchased. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to set it in a more modern period. Uh, ended up setting it in the 1930s in Louisiana. Which is definitely uh, what Moliere would never thought of. Well, probably not. <laughs> Although New Orleans is named after the term, the city of New Orleans, New Orleans is named after the regent, uh -huh. the the um, wasn't a king, but the person who followed after Louis the sixth, uh, Louis the fourteenth died. Um, the regent who took over was the person that they named New Orleans after. So uh, it's very appropriate. Uh, we d it, the primary choice for Louisiana was I sort of wanted to do it in a dialect that the audience would uh, identify with, and Southern seemed to work very well with the language and the mm -hmm. rhythm of the play. Mm -hmm. And so thinking of a Southern dialect with madames and messieurs, I automatically thought of New Orleans. And it turns out there's a political figure from the 1930s in New Orleans, uh, Governor Henry, uh, Huey, not Henry, Huey Long, uh -huh. whose nickname, political nickname was Kingfisher. So and so you it, you the, play, the play makes mm -hmm. a couple of references to the king near the end of the play. And so we just said, well, that's going to be the Kingfisher. Huey Long. Mm -hmm. uh, the, a couple of the women in the play have uh, fans oh. and to sort of help reinforce that they, they have sort of a Huey Long campaign poster on the fan <laughs> as if they picked them up at a local campaign rally. Uh, Huey Long is a whole other interesting character that we could go on for hours about as uh -huh. I've researched into it a little bit but uh, other than just sort of giving me an excuse to put it in Louisiana. Uh, the play deals with a con man who is a religious hypocrite. Matter of fact, if you look up the play title, Tartuffe, in the dictionary, you'll see that it's a synonym for the word hypocrite. Hmm. Uh, Moliere's, because the play has been around for 300 plus years, uh, it's just one of those things that uh, everybody recognizes as so hypocritical So the reason behavior. that word says that is because of Because the play. of the character yeah. in the play, mm -hmm. right. Uh, one of those things where literature gave us a word in our language. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but at one point uh, in the translation, Wilbur has, uh, to, says to one of the characters, you deserve to be tartuffified. Uh, the head of the family has been totally taken in by this con man, has brought him to live under his household, and his daughter and son and wife and brother-in-law, uh, his uh, daughter's s supposed fiancé that he's upset about now the father's now upset about all these people just have seen right through Tartuffe and Oregon hasn't so the uh, real you know crux of the play is will they be able to get Oregon to to lift the veil from his eyes and see Tartuffe for who he really is and of course being a Moliere comedy it has a uplifting ending let's and just a few leave it that. Along the way. oh yeah <laughs> lots of twists along the way uh, it's a it's very much a satire and I, I've said in some of the pre publicity materials that it's you know it's not unlike uh, what college students are familiar with with the Colbert report or the mm -hmm. Daily Show mm -hmm. it's really sort of poking fun at people whose extreme behaviors um, you know this week we say this and next week we go oh wait now I say this uh, sort of swinging between two extremes and mm -hmm. not really having a moderate approach is really what ultimately the play is about. Okay. Uh, when the father finally sort of has the veil lifted from his eyes, he goes, oh, for now I hate all religious people. And one of the other characters goes, no, 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 that's not the proper reaction. <laughs> so the play, the theme, of, for me, the theme of the play, primary theme of the play is moderation. Well, now, this is how large a cast. There are 12 members of the cast. That's a pretty good size it cast. It is a good mm -hmm. size cast. And because we're doing 10 performances, uh, we had um, a couple of young people with less experience than some of the seniors who are in the show. Mm -hmm. And they're playing a couple of smaller roles and we'll have two understudy performances for them to uh, understudy uh, some of the larger That's roles. That's great. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's been an exciting experience for them. And uh, you know, it's always trepidatious because they don't get as much, they observe and make notes, but they don't get as much rehearsal time as the real people. So it's a, it's a, that's a good learning experience as that's well. That's great. Now, is it a complex set? No, it's very simple because we're in three quarter thrust. Yeah. There's not a lot you can uh, do in terms of, uh, you know, tall furniture or scenic pieces because people, it would be in the way of people seeing things. So it's really, uh, it's Orgon's veranda, uh -huh. uh, a lot of wicker places to sit and bring people out on stage on, but, um, so nothing, it, nothing complex at all. So it more or less takes place all in that same location. It, yes, yeah. that's very typical of plays of that period. Okay, okay. So you're not no no dragon furniture in. No, <laughs> no, no. It's it's a it, the show will probably run just under two hours. Okay. Uh, and there'll be a ten minute intermission, of course. But 
Uh, it's a, it should be very lively, hopefully, if, if all things come to fruition as they should. Very fun. Uh, when I was involved as an undergraduate a lot of years ago, uh -huh. I was involved in a production where the audience was sitting on some risers. And one young man got so tickled at one point, he leaned back on his chair and it fell off the riser. <laughs> Fortunately, it was, there was a curtain behind him, a very heavy curtain behind him, and he just kind of fell through the curtain material like you see in it. But he was just <laughs> laughing so hard that he just rocked his chair right off the riser. So if we can if we can manage that level, and there's a couple of moments last night in one of our first through, run through rehearsals, where it was just um, a couple of people who had not who, who were coming to see you know mm -hmm. how the show was coming mm -hmm. together, uh, had very uh, laughable moments. So by That's the time right. we get it polished up this week and open next week, we should have a really fun show on our hands. That sounds wonderful. Now uh, to get tickets. Well, um, the easiest thing is to go online, mm -hmm. uh, theater, www.theater.appstate.edu, right. and there's a link to the uh, performances and box mm -hmm. office information. There's a, a link right over the left where you can you know, order tickets online. Right. You can also, that'll give you a phone number, which is 828-262-3063. Um, we'll mm -hmm. ring you directly to the box office. Okay. Tickets for students are $9, for adults is 16 and can they go to the Valborg box office and pick them up as well? They can go to the Valborg box office or the Schaefer Center box office. Tickets okay. are on sale at either of those locations. Uh, we don't have a real good box office facility at Greer. Right. And because it is a small house, I strongly recommend getting tickets in advance right. because we'll call mm -hmm. will be kind of a mess. Now, how big is a small house? How big? It's, is a, it's, it's right at 100 seats, That's I think. That's not that many. No, right. it's really uh -huh. not. Mm -hmm. uh, the Valborg seats about three times that. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. we're expecting some sellout crowds. That's keeping wonderful. Keeping our fingers crossed. That's wonderful. We've got a uh, Keith Martin's arts management class is working on it. The, his publicity team who's working on it gets uh, extra oh, credit. It, they get extra credit <laughs> if, they get a, if they get a full house every night. So they're, they're really pushing well, for that for extra them. credit. Yeah. Good so. for them. Good motivation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm thankful that you came and told us all about this. I think it'll be a win. Really I think cool people will really enjoy yeah, it uh -huh. uh, if, if they'll just have, come and have a good laugh. There's, yeah. there's a you know, serious underlying message, but it's, you know, you can walk away from the theater not worrying too much about that, just having had a good time. And we all need a, a break. Yeah, and these that days. That would be a great break. <laughs> these days know. of, of mm -hmm. polarized behavior, we could use Seriously. some moderate. Well, it's ironic that you're beginning the day after the election. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we'll see how all that turns out. <laughs> we, we may all need a good laugh. Exactly. No matter which end you're on, you may end up going, you know, I could really use a good laugh. And so this is your recipe for a good laugh. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, check uh, their website, which is uh, appstate.theater.edu. The theater.appstate.edu. Excuse theater. me. Theater.appstate. Theater good. comes first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. I should have known. <laughs> and it's R-E, too. That, well, it, it, it goes, it works either way. You can Does do it really? E-R or R-E. Okay. We want to make sure people find this. Okay. Because so. I'm always pretty picky about always yeah. using the R-E. And but, when, the da when the dance people come, they'll tell you it's dance.appstate.edu. It takes the same place. So you can do theater, yeah. E-R, theater, R-E, or dance, and you'll get to the All our the homepage. shortcuts take you to the same. Yeah. That's correct. That's great. And then you uh, have an opportunity to enjoy Tartuffe, and there's a lot of really other cool things that the university is doing through the theater department that we've been talking about some already this fall. We'll continue to talk about them. And I encourage you to make it a regular thing uh, to go and check out these performances. They're really neat. And these students, as I sometimes say, are only a year or two from being professionals. And so you're not talking about, you know, third graders or something. You're talking <laughs> about people who have some experience and some skill and, and are honing those we skills. We work them pretty hard. Yeah. As of last week, we had, in student hours, uh -huh. over 584 hours in rehearsal. I mean, that's counting, you know, that's counting each individual's, like, work right. hours. Right, right. But, they're but they've invested a lot of time putting and a lot some of energy effort into, into this. That's mm -hmm. absolutely right. I think that theater and music are two of the most demanding majors in terms for that of, very reason. In terms of mm -hmm. co what we call co-curricular time outside mm -hmm. of the classroom, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, all, all uh, majors have to do outside work. Right. But right. I think the hours demanded sometimes can be more extreme. That rehearsal mm -hmm. takes a lot of time. Exactly. And you've got to be there at the right time, right place, That's all right. that good stuff. So, uh, so it's really cool what we're doing in this community with the student population in terms of the arts as well. Speaking of uh, doing things in the arts, I want to point out something to you. I am trying a trial run of something on our website and our Facebook page that I hope you'll go check out. We're doing a little mini version, and if it works, we're going to do a big version. 
of what we're calling an online store and it's an opportunity to go and purchase tickets to events, purchase memberships, you can purchase gift certificates and you can also sign up for workshops and classes and you just select the thing that you want and you go straight through PayPal and you can actually sign up from Facebook of all the places. So there's plenty of opportunities to get involved. Go check it out. I'd like your feedback. What's I'd like the, to know what's what you the think. website on that? Uh, our face, our website is watauga-arts.org. Okay. And our Facebook page is Watauga County Arts Council. Okay. And of course, you've liked it, right, Joel? I haven't yet, but I will as soon as right, I get back I'm to my computer. I'm going to go check it about an hour. I'm going to see if Joel has liked our page. <laughs> and I want to know what you think about the online store. Oh, look at it. Because it's a new idea. It's a way of helping people. You know, it's like they heard us talk about this theater production right. just now. And yet they're still going to have to remember to go and make a phone That's call right. or go get a ticket or arrange it, you know. And so it's cutting we're trying out to some make of it, that. We're trying to make it as yeah, easy as possible. Exactly. And it's cutting out some of that delay time and opportunity right. to get distracted or forget to do something you really wanted to do. Right. And so we're trying this as an option, and I just would love to see what people think about the idea because I think it might make things easier for everybody. So Fantastic. check our website, watauga-arts.org. You'll find links to what Joel's talking about. You'll find our online store. You'll find a whole lot more about the arts all through Watauga County. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.